Today is Monday, August 30, 2004. This is a meeting of the Franklin County Board of Commissioners. We've got 15 I'm, minutes. No. Vacancy. Well, our 915 can't. This go. might be my uniform for the day <laughs> for the week because. <laughs> be no That's nylons. the one you can get over your cash, huh? There'll be no nylons. Well, is there a um, motion? I move approval of the consent agenda. My turn, but I'll second it. Oh, anyhow, you got so. to do a whole lot of them last week. Okay. Um, um, item three. Did you want to pull that and vote no, separately? No, um, I think I'll just vote against the motion. Oh, Nina. I have done it before. Well, okay, let's start I, over. I do have Would you a, like I do to do that? Stamp as opposed we because in the minute she had opposed it. Mm -hmm. before, we approved it. As and a you board. were presumptuous that she would not have okay. seen the light? And we approved it as a board. And I. and I. You voted against it, so okay. you can. Uh, vote for this motion. Shouldn't make any difference. Yeah. Okay. All in Aye. 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 I don't like to be contrary. Well, we would never am. guessed that. <laughs> no, we accept that. Right? Uh, what did Mr. Bazzini's, uh, what was his excuse? Well, there was a little confusion when Glenn called on behalf of his uh, wife, who was hard of hearing or deaf. Uh, he didn't tell me that I needed to schedule an interpreter. Oh. And... The interpreter costs thirty dollars an hour, and Franklin County would be responsible for that. And I told him that I would need to check with the board before I could authorize Franklin County spending thirty dollars for the <coughs> interpreter. And Mr. Brock and Mr. Bowen agreed that that we should just go ahead and cancel it. And mm -hmm. Mr. Brock also indicated that they should be responsible. Well, for I think that they have people down there at that office on, on that this, work on that. On this. Um, did they pull? No, the we're just for? we're just doing the ones that are are up to. Oh, okay. Uh, well, one thing, you know, I had a question. I, I should have asked this ahead of time. Dave has some um, on an expense. Okay, now too many people are talking, and I'm going to get lost. Well, I just asked her about this because there's a, a warrant uh, for travel that maybe he didn't get. Dave. Mm -hmm. Oh, but, okay. Okay. We're going back to 2003 on this for Richard Boyles. I don't quite understand that. No. Well, he evidently got a check and didn't cash it. Well, does he realize our policy here? Uh-huh. Yeah. Mr. Boyle yeah, like. is ceased. Mm-hmm. Uh, he might realize it. So would we just make it good? I don't see it. Oh, okay. Okay. I've got my blue sheet in my office where it's safe. Can't be touched. Mm -hmm. Did you hear that I did this? I just heard it this morning. Yeah. Oh, Cherry oh. came in. Oh, so they, they told me. The girls told me. By the way, everybody, thank you for the beautiful Get Well card that I received. A week and a half ago. It was very nice of all of you. We're nice bunch of people here, so. We're nice people, huh? Did I sign You're it? feeling better, huh? <laughs> you look better. I have to feel better. I've got to go doorbelling. I might just announce, too, that she no longer has a chauffeur, so you might keep that in mind if you're out driving in the streets of Pasco. Oh. Neva's probably ridden with. Wilbert, she probably is greatly relieved to hear that. <laughs> well, I'm the one that's probably dangerous driving with one hand. Yeah. <laughs> I take kind of wide turns. <laughs> you did that Saturday night coming out of the VIP pit tent? Yeah, Friday night. Friday night when she was with us. Is that right? Yeah. Right after you left? I was worried. I said, we shouldn't have let her walk out of here by herself. Oh, it was the sandals I had on. And there you go. I must do Where'd you fall at? Right in the middle of 1,500 people. Very good. 
We did you go the, over and work the booth after that? Did you go home? Yes, I did. And then it started swelling and really bruising, and so uh, they had lots of help, so I went home. It would have been good for my campaign if you had done it in front of me, and I could have tried to help you. Instead of and my photographer, who I have with me at all times. Instead time. of stomping me on the ground? <laughs> yeah. Well, you don't, you really feel foolish. I know. But I must. I must use my left hand to break my fall. That must be just natural for me. Because I did the same thing in June. Really? At that, that, um. I remember when Jackie and I went down to Fort Limpton that yard sale? Oh, you sale. told me about it, yeah. yeah. And I stumbled over a sidewalk that was not good. Not watching where I was going. Crazy. Not as agile as I used to be. <laughs> But regardless of your age, when you fall down and catch your weight on one arm, you can do something. Yeah. Just birds on my hip. Mm. Hmm. Sheila said, you must have good bones, Eva. And I said, I'm sure I do. <laughs> or I'd have broken something by now. Bad. <sighs> How was everybody else's weekend? Good. Easy. Was the um, fair good Saturday? Sounded like they had a big crowd. Well, we had a big crowd yeah. coming, yeah. coming yeah. in when we left. So a lady well, gave us <clears throat> a lady gave us tickets to the evening show for Saturday night, so we went and listened for a while. There's four of those, but there's only two of these. Gosh, Pat, I didn't think you had that large of a packet. So oh, Frank, I didn't see you come over to the range for me to cook the bread. Oh, I was over there. The range? Yeah, we came over and had lunch on Saturday. You went there. Yeah, the the Grange booth is a good booth. It really is. Even when you were there, right? Now. <laughs> yeah, we did. Had you see the Shriners' new outfit? They got a uh, $30,000 trailer. Who did this, Neva? The Shriners. You know, they had their... There's one in the back, too, Mr. Brock. Pardon me? There's one in the back, too. Oh, well, they all signed there. I got home after cooking. I think I got done about 1 o'clock. I went home and picked up my son, Dylan, and we took off to go down with the air compressor, and he goes... He goes, I don't want you to take this wrong. He says, you smell pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> food. It's like fair food. <laughs> I'm sure like everybody to know how much I appreciate Pat's efforts in getting a couple of tickets for myself. And very you appreciated for I was, sons. I was oh, wondering if you've got those. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Pat just made her cell phone call. And well, I, I am glad you got them good. Was it fun? Oh. <laughs> Especially for the kids. Well, these kids are from uh, from St. Paul, Minnesota. I don't think they've ever seen anything like a demolition derby. So it was great fun. Mm. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what am I supposed to ask her now? Um, oh, okay. Will you go that graded exercise for me tomorrow? Um can't do anything because you've got a bad hand, so you can't do anything now. I think we're having a birthday for Mc oh. Madison. Oh, okay. I talked about doing that for you. And um, I wonder if Steve Lowe could do it. I think he's probably already on for doing it. No, not for the... For, um, 
information officer. Oh, he's been information officer before. Oh, I'll ask him because I have a doctor's appointment and I don't want to miss it. You don't have to have an elected official do that. No, Benton County never has anybody. No. Well, once in a while, Bud comes in. No, he's there for a very short time, Sue. So anytime he's ever Lunch. been there, yeah. and I've never seen him there but about once. With all due respect, I mean, they have a very important thing to do there. Yeah. <laughs> That's my problem. I'm not important enough. There you go, Pat. My goodness. I move for approval of the vouchers as listed. I'll second the motion. Aye. 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 Neva has a broken hand. She can't call for the vote. <laughs> well, you all said aye, so I did too. <laughs> did I miss one? I don't know how such a thing. It must have not been printed when we looked at it. because Sue and Neva have a transit board meeting unless they care to. Well, actually, you're all available. No, I'm not. It's between 5 and 7 p.m. Oh. On September 9th. Yeah, you know what? I thought I'd go into, I thought it just came to me, and, well, this one did. Um, mm -hmm. I'd yeah. go and take Jared with me. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you and Jerry? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So do you? Mm -mm. Not one Unless of one of you would like to go and take care of it. You're no, you talking about this tri city real uh -huh. No. I uh, okay. we'll take you on a revised one, Dan. Okay. One, you don't have to RSVP this one, do you? Doesn't say. I thought it said on the other side or something. Doesn't say RSVP. I will call you to confirm your participation, and so they will be calling all three of you to. We'll see. I may, I may attend that. And Frank, you said you needed time to think about going to this Tri CD Herald, the McClatchy Company Board of Directors, uh, on, on the 19th? September 19th. No. What are they doing? I have a commitment. What did I you get invited to do? Well, this came for Neva. And, there's only and, and, you know, I, again, I've got another birthday. It's on a Sunday. Madison's is the 31st, and McKenzie's on the 20th, and we, mm -hmm. and I'm just tied up. Mm -hmm. Leo has already RSVP'd. If I were Leo, Am I'd I invited RS... to that then? Well, why Just not? the chairman was. Oh. But since the chair can't go, they would love to have a Franklin County representative. I'll go. Maybe. What day is it? Sunday the 19th. Mm -hmm. I think so. And I told her I wouldn't be. We just got it Friday, and they wanted an RSVP on the 26th, which we just got it on the 27th. So, if I were Leo, I'd RSVP it forever after that editorial game. Mm -hmm. Okay. Regardless of any other commitments. Okay. 19th. Mm -hmm. And are you going to ask Steve Lowe about? Emergency management one is. Why don't you give him a call? Okay. But it doesn't have to be Steve Lowe. No. He no, can, but he's trying else. to think of some poor person to pin it on. Well, it's not that bad a deal to go over there, really. Uh, Jared could do it or Fred could do it. I mean, over 
At the jig? At the jig, yeah. I don't know. I don't care who goes. I just would rather not do it this time or else well, go late. Why don't you why don't you sign somebody else to do it? Just well, but, uh, Steve has done it. And he's done it for me before. <laughs> but he will if he has time, but they're always short. Well, I, I'll, right uh, I'll talk to Steve. I kind of think he might already be involved in something else with it. <coughs> well, they may have to. Have, they may have a, somebody already committed out of that office. Yeah. And what I'm mm -hmm. saying is, that yeah, he's kind probably, of shorthanded anyway. Yeah, yeah, they, I'll figure something out. Maybe somebody had a plan in too. Jared has worked in. Uh, has he done that? Nobody's worked on this end of it, so he could do it. Yeah. Actually, they can do it. Our guys can do it. That's what they do for well, they Benton County. Guys are good, yes. <coughs> Nobody is as good as that gal that Benton County used to have that helped me that then worked at the radio station and now works for who? The, Judy works for Doc Hastings. Mm. She was oh, just, Judy, I think. Uh, I tell you, these guys we got out here, I, I like. Mm -hmm. that we have over there. Oh, yeah, ours are great. Tremendous out there. But she was, you know, she could editorialize, editorialize, she could do something with it and but just hand it to me and say, say that and it'll be okay. And she that's how she right made, has made her living for the last 25 years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really like her. We have minutes for August 9th. I move approval of the minutes for August 9th. And I'll second that motion. All in favor. Aye. 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 You know, I went into the Our Lady of Lords Emergency Saturday. Uh, where that's what I was. I was thinking of today, and I thought, oh, I have to watch Fred carefully before he gets away here. <laughs> well, why? What's happening? With Just ask. Just ask. Well, never mind. You don't need the agenda. Know. It's not important. Read your agenda. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Promise me you'll that'll, be here. Uh, if you turn up, if, if you, you turn up missing, head, huh? <laughs> if you turn up missing. <clears throat> Ooh, that's a pretty picture in black and white. Okay. Um boy. We've got a lot of doom and gloom here. Oh, it's not so bad, I don't think. Um, that first one, the courthouse dome, if you go to the next picture, um, if you see the louvered openings that are yes. in the back, mm -hmm. or if you look over to the right side of it, you can see those windows that were colored in, they're painted black. Um, the people that came in and investigated all the glass and the windows determined that these windows cannot be put back in. They're, they, they're not functional, so they're going to remove them. And uh, they, I was asked, where do we want to store them? Uh, my question to you is, do you even want to store them? If they're not functional, well, unless, could they be used functional? for something else? I thought they were. They, uh, you know, they just, they what said that. they for light? They are, but they're going to replace the windows with new windows. It's just that they're not they're not worth putting back into the courthouse. Mm -hmm. They're not worth putting well, What are we going to do about these louvered things? They're coming out. And if we're going to put uh, light windows in so we can have light? Right. That, that whole upper area there mm -hmm. will be ringed with glass. Oh, good. Unless well, there's the, some antique value that we're not yeah. aware of, there'll be no point in keeping them. Okay. We um, should have some person that knows those kind of things look at them and see. Well... They're old. Isn't isn't the Cardwell Cardwell guy? Yeah. Um, apparently, they don't have a problem with those being replaced with new glass. Okay. Um, but I mean, the keeping of them. If there's something, I don't know. Got well, to make little. Something I thought they had a filigree in with them, and <clears throat> they were kind of unique. Well, when we looked at them. They're, they're missing quite a few because of the louvers. They yeah. tore the windows down and they put the louvers in because they're, you know, around the whole dome area. I get, my, my thing was, is, you know, why put them in the port? Because they're just going to sit down there forever anyway. And if they're not worth having, why don't they just get rid of them? Absolutely. Unless 
there's some antique value that we don't know about. Okay, well, I'll ask Eric about that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now, if you remember up in Pat and Bridget's uh, work area on the third floor, that, that cabinet that was all along, that was mm -hmm. along that whole mm -hmm. wall, that, that will not be reused either. Um, mm -hmm. I asked John to make us a, a place for it at the port or to ask the museum to see if uh, maybe Jackie would have a use for it because that is added to well, Yeah. Mm -hmm. the yeah, museum sounds like a better idea. And he was going to go see if Zona had a spot for it too. So we're, we were looking at someplace to put it in the port. Just, if we can find a better use for it, I just want to step ahead of the job. Why won't it be? Yeah. Why won't it be reused? It, just it's to, just not um, of the right size. Oh, and it, it, that's going to be a, a jury room in there. And mm. it takes they're even going to take the vault out. Yeah, the vault's coming out. Yeah, mm -hmm. so, I, yeah. I asked him if he if he could find a place, and he went back. Eric did went back, tried to find a place to use to to use that cabinet. And he couldn't. It's just too. Uh, the dimensions of it are just not right. Oh, so, mm -hmm. but we will try to save well, that. Somewhere. In my opinion, it's very easy, very hard to get things in and out of that cabinet. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, we already got our check. Mm -hmm. It was a copy of it. It was in Friday's yeah. board mail. Wow. Actually, my board mail it was the original. And already they have been about how long getting that? You know, we've been promised that check for a long time. Mm -hmm. Quite a while. Yeah. Um, actually, what I would like to do with this money is uh, track had a um, subsidy payment. I'd like to be able to make that subsidy payment out of this uh, and throw the rest of it in. Well, we have several accounts that we need to reimburse. Um, um, the parking lot that we had done, we took that out of uh, the track bond money. We were going to pay it back once this money came in. Um, I'll, I'll get all of that separated out, bring it to you probably Wednesday, but I would like to throw all of it in the rainy day fund and just leave it there. Uh, why are we subsidizing that bond fund? We um, went and took Fifty-seven or fifty-eight thousand dollars out to put the asphalt grindings on that six-acre yeah, piece. But which bond fund are you speaking of? Uh, we went out and took bond out of the point of eight money for track improvements. Yeah, what I'm saying is, we're just going to rob Peter to pay Paul. Do that, Fred. Well, well, no, because you, if, if you borrowed out of a fund, no, you need to pay it back. No, you don't, because it's discretionary. Both of them are discretionary money. Point of eight money isn't. Yeah, but wouldn't that uh, wouldn't that um, parking we, lot qualify for economic development? It would, but why don't we just not pay it back? Then we probably won't get the hard floor out of track. You what know? do you mean hard floor? Well, we were looking at doing several different things out of track with that uh, 0.08 money, but put that plastic we'll still have the money. Right? We'll still have right? the money in another fund. We'll still have that It'll money. still be there, yeah. It'll still and, be in there. And won't the point oh eight money continue to gather extra money that we can... It will gather extra money, and it's, if it's not discretionary, we need to have discretionary money. Okay. That's what you want to do. So, okay, then I'll just... All right, I'll just throw it all in the, in the rainy day fund. It, really, uh, yeah. Except for the... the substitute subsidy payment. Well, mm. and, and the subsidy payment wouldn't qualify out of that .08 money, though. Because no. that's economic development. No. <laughs> we, well, right, we, yes. I'll tell you what, we've got that, uh, we've got that .08 money down pretty thin. But it's, gonna, it's still going to grow. It will grow. It's yeah, still going to grow. It will grow. But you say that wouldn't be qualified? Um, wouldn't it qualify the if we had the money? The only way that it would really qualify is through taking that. Jeff has been really, really pretty adamant that we go to the to the the board that was set up to determine where those funds are going to be spent. And if we didn't do that, then we're just opening ourselves up for possible. Um, but other counties don't even have a board. I don't know. But we do. So that's and how much. Problem. How much is in that fund? Not much, as a matter of fact. You won't we tell us. <laughs> <laughs> you said not much, like, 
you know, uh, we basically... You don't that, have it back here. No, the .08 money, if you remember, we basically um, reimbursed ourselves back any extra money that was in there to pay for that portable for the work release. Yes. And so we pretty well depleted everything that was in there and available but at that time. But as of what time, January or June 1st? Somewhere uh, in what, Why don't we look at... Uh, how much money we have in there before we assign money to go for the subsidy. Then we'll know exactly where we are. Right. Okay. God, we're hard to get along with today. I know for yeah, that. You guys are kind of tough here. But yeah. All right. I don't even know if I want to continue. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. They're pretty spendy. I'm going to have to crack down on them. Um, we received the amounts for the gilding. Um, where it's is on it? page four. Oh, I see. Um, I didn't realize that Terrence want, needed approval on this, but uh, this is the dollar amount, and that is for the, the brass leaf and not the gold leaf. Yeah. Um, and that's already been approved uh, out of that bond. I right. thought it was, too, uh, but I wanted to come back and talk to you about it. To, to I move for approval. Second. Um. I still would like to hold out for gold, but what what was the difference between gold and brass? What is it? Oh yeah, it was. Uh, I think it was about a twenty. I, I don't remember. Either. I think it was like twenty five percent savings on that. Yeah, I it think was, it was up it? about a hundred. I think it was a seventy thousand dollars savings by going with the brass. But down the road, are we going to be sorry? Not according to. Uh, this uh, won't was this won't color the way brass. Uh, well, the, when they brought those in, the samples in, you actually chose the brass over the gold because you thought that looked more. Looked better. Look, yeah, look was the better choice. Neva just likes the sound of gold. I do. Well, I can't say I blame her. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We have All a motion. in favor of the motion. Aye. Aye. Reluctantly. Okay. Aye. Okay. Um, all right, number four, uh, courthouse restoration. They found uh, more number asbestos. Five. Number four. What's page five? Oh, is this just talking about it? Yeah, yeah. I'm on agenda number four. Yeah, uh, you know what? Actually, anybody who signs this contract to that gold leaf to me is just, I can't believe it. What? It says right, right here, the... The undersigned further agrees to indemnify and hold harmless gold leaf restoration for all claims and damages of any source, uh, owner, or loss of damage for such objects. However, okay. I can't hardly read, read Occasioned that. and whether yeah. or not. Basically, what they're saying here is that even if they do it, they're going to hold them harmless for it. Yeah, that's. We're better off to go the other way. Okay. Yeah, I'll tell you, if they sign that, it's crazy. But they will. Um, we have a change order on the asbestos and lead removal. Um, they found additional asbestos in the basement, 897 square feet of it. And we're probably going to find more of it because they haven't even gotten out of the basement yet. Um, I talked with Terrence in regards to, uh, you know, the amount that they're charging, it's a dollar fifty per square foot, and that there was no contingency built into the contract for, you know, if they found up to ten or twenty percent over what was identified on the plan. So every time they come across new, new sources of this material, we're going to be able to change orders on this. So this first change order is for a thousand eleven dollars. So why, when when uh, they gave us all these costs and everything. Why didn't they build in if, if, if with something like that? Well, we have a built-in change order in in the total construction yeah. plan that this will have to come out of. They tried to identify everything that they oh. could, but when they ripped the carpets up down below, they found mm -hmm. it. Uh, I, I move for approval. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. There, we really don't have much choice no, when it comes to this stuff. You know. No, we don't. We cannot stop construction. Uh, number five, you want to park, and that also ties in with number eight. Actually, I have a meeting scheduled with the city of Pasco at 1:30 today to talk about Chihuahua Park and to also talk about uh, the well out at track. 
I guess I need a little bit of direction on this Chihuahua Park. Um, I know uh, I have a pretty good idea. The city's going to come in with the. Um, Excuse me. Is this executive session? Is it? You know, I don't know if it is or not. I mean. I'm just asking because it has been. Some I don't think that. I don't think it makes any difference. Um, what they're going to, to come in with is that our budget, they're going to come in. I know that what they're going to do is they're going to come in and they're going to say, we can take we can take over the park, maintain the park, keep it to its, its existing standard, and our budget is around $150,000. And they're going to, their offer to the county is, is that you pay half of the $150,000 and we maintain the park from here on out which means that the county would no longer have any management control over that park is going to be their offer. Um, Tim was putting together a budget for us, <coughs> and if we take our budget in to them, and um, how do you want to do this? I mean, the city's going to say, okay, if you, want, if you want us to help you out with the park, we'll take over the park. Eventually, we're going to end up with the park anyway, so why not just let us have it right now, and we'll just go ahead and ma maintain it for this amount of money. So I guess I need a little direction as to how you guys for, want to. For one year. It, you know, I told them it would only for, be for one year. For we one could, year. Uh, I, I don't have an objection myself. Well, what, <coughs> what are they going to do then about the house and, and the caretaker? I don't believe that they're going to keep them. They'll probably just empty the house and, and the caretaker will no longer be able to. Now that house there. is all fixed up and everything. I think that's not not a good idea. I th well, I'm pretty sure that's going to be their proposal to the <coughs> county. So I just need direction as to what we want to do when we get in there. I don't think I'm in favor of that. I sure knew. I sure uh, feel bad that we didn't foresee but, all this but stuff. But we've got to we define could've. what we're not in favor of because, look, they're going to get the park back, period, as yeah. simple as that, and we're going to have to give notice. And I think when we say we're not in favor, we got to say what we're not in favor of. Well, I'm not in favor of, of abandoning the house and, and abandoning the employee. Yeah, what's going on up here? This involves you, too. That's my recommendation because I mean, you need to negotiate the terms of it. Well, the, yeah, you're not in very good standing to negotiate. You know, we've got, you know, we've got very little, little power to negotiate. Um, well, why don't we find out where they are before we take a position? I know our park board's taking position that they would like to meet with their park board and possibly Gary to go over to see if some of the visions that we have would be carried forward, or at least find out. Yeah, and that was Gary's, you know, Gary concerns or comments too is he realizes that there's been a lot of effort put into the park and that the park a lot of ownership for the some, park board sure. yeah that, that they're going to have some you know wants well and there might be or, a conflict with you know, Gary being part of the negotiations because but, he's a neighbor to the park and has been um, the, what we have to remember on this thing we have that issue with Gary yeah. but what we have to remember is that this will probably be our last year in participation with the thing, and all we're waiting for is to get some direction as far as the way the city was going to go on that. And uh, then we're going to send a letter saying we want to be out of that thing in a year. Oh, you haven't sent it yet? Mm -hmm. well, no, we don't have that back, that we back until because, we got a chance to yeah. talk. But we need to get some, some definite direction from them. Well, I'm, I'm assuming that I, I'm probably not too far Sorry, off Robert. on the assumption. As to what the city is going to offer the county today at 1:30. Well, and then I think maybe we can have more yeah, of let's definite get their conversation offer. here at this table after we see what they're. Yeah, after they have something definite. Yeah. Then you can bring back. I mean, I don't think you should. I think you raise concerns that there's some concerns about the house and existing employees, and then the plans we have in the future done. What are you doing? We do have, party? we do have, uh, we're 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 taking park funds right now, and that's I, I told planning what was happening. They said, well, why are we collecting plan or park funds anymore then if we're not going to have any parks? And I, the answer to that is we can participate in making sure they get developed can, by offering money to help. How much is in that whatever. park fund? There's about fourteen thousand in there now. 
Um, every time somebody built a house and the developer didn't pay that original fee up front in the urban area, it's 300 bucks. Mm -hmm. So it'll add up over time. And then $50 out in the rural area. Right? I'd, I'd like to see, or I would, I would hope that we actively continue help and help get that boat launch completed because that's kind of what we committed to mm -hmm. as a minimum. Well, I think that would be Beyond outside that, of our, there's no that would be outside of our negotiations. Yes, here, obviously. <coughs> but we committed to the boat launch, but but we need to find out as far as the operation of the thing. Well, as far as the part, our park board is concerned, yeah, it's outside, but it's something they're. You know, we have long-range plans for that whole area, and that was one of them, making sure that it gets carried through. Mm -hmm. Whether, you know, like I said, you're not in very good negotiating in terms of figuring out your part. Yeah. We want to get disembarked from the money issues. Or but they want to know whether they're going to carry the same vision forward. You heard it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but, but they haven't met together yet, huh? No, we can talk about Well, then, I think yeah. this is... Yeah, we'll see what they're. Okay. Well, my, I, I, I don't. You know, at this point, I'm. You want me to? Yeah. Well, you've been involved. In it. Or yeah. It's over in Gary's office. Okay. You probably got a better understanding of that than yeah. anybody can. Yeah. Okay. Now we're going to meet here at one thirty. I won't be here at one thirty. I had that that meeting with this the city. Already set, and then I see that the auditor came in at 4 30. So, you know, it's either I go to the two on the park uh, negotiations or I come to the state auditor's entrance on it. Tim, before we begin, oh, um, Maury Malcolm called me <coughs> and said that that uh, bridge down on Fend Road yeah, is we're aware of it. causing a lot of troubles. And I think you had, didn't you say that something already happened on it? But I thought. Yeah, we stripped it. Off, mm -hmm. and then we put everything back and we chip sealed it. Well, mm -hmm. they hauled out spuds, which has hammered it, and so it's starting to show distress from that. Well, he said we're going to have to uh, look at doing some additional things to that. Okay, he said How that. How bad is your Well, the the asphalt because it really didn't get a chance to out before the trucks just hammered it. It's starting to shove and. And move around. They never had a chance. They never had a chance to figure out. There's, he said, there's quite a bit of, I don't know, drop there or a bump or something. He said people are hitting their oil pans on it or something. Well, that's old news. He said there's a lot of. Well, I, I thought lately? that's what you <laughs> talked about. I think it's been fixed right for a couple of weeks now. You need to drive them. And then, uh, well, it's not right on. I think it's right in this way. Huh? That one oil pan was quite a while back. Yeah. But, but, well, yeah, that's <clears> when <throat> I heard about it from you. But anyway, he said there's a lot of uh, milk trucks and things going over that every day. Because there's a dairy up there. Well, the, 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 it's fixed here. now. I mean, and it's vineyards, the one that we're having problems with. It's showing that's when we're hauling all those trucks across. But You're not then, having trouble with the one on Fan Road? I don't believe so. No, they're all fixed. I just talked from last night. They've been chipped and mm -hmm. they got. Better have Ron go out He and said check they it. fixed it, but he said they didn't fix it. That's what he said. He, he said it wasn't fixed good enough and the trucks turned it apart. And he said it's then you're really. Good. Or maybe it is Finn. I thought well, it was he said Finn because I, I questioned him on it. But I that was the vineyard one that was having problems. They, they're harvesting a field and they, they didn't get yeah. a chance to turn out before it started shoving mm -hmm. around and moving. So, yeah, there might be some problems, but we were aware of them and we're going to take care of them. But yeah. until they stop hauling, we really hurt. can't take care of it. Yeah, he was just afraid somebody was going to get hurt. But they're still hauling pretty heavy on it down there. Uh, my understanding, I think there was another field that had to come off yet, yeah, but once that happens... How long do you think that's set up, Tim? <clears throat> you like to have a good 10 days, but it's it's already moved, and we're going to have to uh, do a whole bunch of repair work before we do it. Do you know when that would be started or anything? No, you won't. Ron to call him? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. Maury? Maury? Mm -hmm. Okay. I think he said he'd already talked to Ron. It was a timing issue. It didn't fit their schedule. 
Okay. Um, we got the deeds back on the Irwin Trust property, and we need to sign a. It's a resolution for you to sign a deed of it's called the deed of right. We will use that for public recreational purposes. Is it 391, Mary? Yes. What number, Mary? 391. Okay. 2004-391. I move for approval of resolution 2004-391 as specified. I will second that motion. All in favor. All right. And then here's the actual deed itself. The chair is there. And does that have There's to be notarized? Yeah. You don't have one yet? So we need uh, Rebecca? Yes. Rebecca, could you come and the commissioner's signature? Thank you. Okay, it's just clumsy. Is that a hard cast or soft cast? It's hard. You don't think we get that one? Yeah. Well, that's the one she always hits me with. <laughs> You're sitting on the wrong side. She uh -huh. won't let us. Uh, <laughs> she won't let us autograph it. She was coming out of the VIP tent late at night when she slept. <laughs> Actually, they threw her out when they closed it up. They just, they helped her to the door, I guess that was it. <laughs> this next one is more of a question because we're putting together the final assessment role. Uh, CRD 18 was the self-landing, that piece self-landing out there at the end by the river. Um, our original estimate was for 117860 The actual cost come in at 129889 for a number of reasons. I don't know if you want to hear all of them. Uh, there was a change order for a cover that we thought we could extend that was rotten. We had to replace the whole thing. Uh, we ended up moving more dirt than what we thought we were going to from the original estimate and some additional burial costs. That was that little stretch of road. Right. Around. And it don't take very much before you're up over an estimate, something that short. But, um, we were going to pick up 75% of, or they were going to pick up 75% of the cost, and we were going to pick up 25% of the cost. If we go with the total cost, it raises their assessment from 3,535.80 to 3,896.68, which we're entitled to do if you want to. Um, it's just what we want to put up with people making an issue of it or not. Well, how much are we talking about difference? Uh, 12000 Could we pick that up? Yes. From our funds? We're already picking up um, about 20, like almost 30. Anyway. But first, didn't we do that as kind of an accommodation in addition to it? We don't have to take a grader in there now. Right. But that's uh, that's the reason we said that we were willing to participate in it. Is but it's, it's it becomes clearly it's more like no. That's what I was going <laughs> to say. I was going to say it. I thought it. True. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, it, I, we, we can go either way. If you don't want it, you know. I'd rather just personally absorb it. Absorb. Okay. Yeah, we'll yeah, bring them in. Rather what now? Absorb the cost rather than pass it on. Well. And she will take that out of her salary line item. I, uh, I don't know. Uh, it, it doesn't make a difference. I, I think they should pay their portion. It would. Re we, they said they were going to pay seventy-five percent, and the original estimate. 
it would have been 3,896. I mean, 3,535. With the additional, it would have raised it up to $300 to 3,896. That's the difference. So $361 more. $361 more per property owner. Yeah. I don't think it would hurt. About 10%. I don't think it would hurt. Personally, I don't think it hurt to pay that much more. Well, uh, you want me okay, to bring it in? Hey, we can ask them. Yeah. Or tell them or whatever okay. you do. We'll, we'll float the 38. You can always, when the public hearing is, and if there's enough of them, you can ask back in. Um, yeah. yeah. Yep. Maybe they won't say nothing. I don't know. We'll see. We'll float the 38 and see what happens. But before I did that, I wanted to make you aware of it. Okay. See what we're going to give you a chance. Just do it. As far as urban trust voting access project, that's more of an update. Um, yeah, our consultant got a hold of NIMS, or the gal that chose or made the statement that she doesn't believe they disagreed with our call as far as may adversely affect but not likely to. And that's really the only issue they have. Um, but it'll be November before she does her biological opinion, so we have something to start from as far as negotiation. Therefore, it's kind of like our park board's opinion, in my opinion, that we're wasting our time going now because we don't know what kind of mitigations yeah. we can apply to that. Yeah. And if we spend it now with the cost we have and they throw something in there that's very expensive, we'll still be committed to doing the project. So I think we're going to back off this I year. think we'd better wait. Yeah. Which is going to make for that because it doesn't have to worry about any additional money. For next year, which we don't have money. Yes. Okay. So hopefully there will be enough houses built that we'll have enough of that other money that we can throw in as a match. Yeah, that uh, park fee. I'm there. surprised there's 14000 14000 quite a lot of money in there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's it. Okay. Um, so you're going to go with um, Fred to meet 130. the city. 130. Okay. Tim, we thank you. Yeah, yeah thanks, Tim. For, for yes, I did. Thank oh, you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. You got your maggots? Yeah. Okay. I didn't know if anybody was going to steal them or not. There's a lot of demand for them. Sure. <laughs> okay. Well, I grabbed them and took them away. Good. All right. We have Eric and Randy Baldry, right? Morning. Morning. Good morning. Morning, morning. Randy. How are you this morning? Good, Frank. How are you? Fine, thank you. Very nice to see you. And nice to meet you. Nice. I'm Randy Baldry, Commissioner Corbin. Sue Miller. Commissioner nice Miller, Miller, nice to meet you. I'm Randy Baldry. I'll, I'll shake hands with you. Well, I didn't know whether you want to shake hands with me again, Frank. Uh, Frank was on the selection committee that uh, ultimately hired me. So uh -huh. He's uh, had a little advanced, advanced, advanced exposure to me. So there it is. Thank you. And you're uh, housed out of Richland? Yes, ma'am. Hmm. I'd ask Eric to uh, set up a, a meeting today if just to come by and mostly uh, meet the other two commissioners, but also to kind of give you kind of a status report on the extensions uh, plans, not only for the, the refill of, of Eric's position and how we'll approach that, but also to talk briefly about the uh, the reappointment of a new county uh, director for the office. Eric is the, we formally call them county chairs, now we call them county directors, but the lead person in the office. And, and uh, I wanted to kind of give you a little update on it, and I would really appreciate your involvement in that process as a board if you chose or as a delegate from the board if you would prefer, whichever might be more desirable for you. But we're going to try, in the past, we've done a little something different we're going to try something a little different than we've done in the past in terms of appointing a county director. 
Uh, in this case, in the office with the three other extension faculty that are housed here, mm -hmm. all three have expressed an interest in being the county director and have, and have basically compiled letters of application and submitted uh, uh, documents uh, to apply for the position. And so what we'd like to do is to uh, have a process that we'll go through. And I have uh, a small committee of outside folks, mostly other county directors uh, from around the district, that will come in on a date and, and actually review their letter of interest in the position. And then we'll have an interview session with each of them. And they've been asked to give about a 15-minute presentation to the selection committee. And then, in addition to that, the selection committee would be given uh, their letter of interest that expresses what their qualifications for the job are, what their philosophy and leadership are, all the criteria that they look for under a county director. And then we'd ask the committee to review those. And for this committee, which would be composed of the commissioners or a delegate from the commissioners, along with three out out of the area county directors, they will be out. Of, they will be county directors from this district, but they'll to be other experienced county directors and myself. And this committee would hear the, about a 15-minute presentation from each each of the candidates, and they would be able to ask the candidates basically a few questions and go through an interview, not unlike the typical interview that you'd have for a, for any kind of position. Similar to what we went through when we interviewed you. Something like that. Oh, hopefully not nearly as comprehensive <laughs> or as thorough an examination, but... In the past, this has been really an appointment that's been made by the county direct by the district director. Mm -hmm. and the district director would come in and find out if there was interest among the faculty in being in this position, and they would visit with them. And this person, this in my case, it would be the person in my position, would just make that decision. And I thought I thought about this, and I've also we've tried this in some other districts using the using the the method that I just described to you, and it really works a little better because it. For, it's particularly in an office where you have three people that are interested in the job. It's, it has the effect of kind of leveling out the individual biases of one person might have and having the opinion and perception of that person from, from different people. And so we're going to try it this way. We've never done it in the Southeast District like this before, and we're going to try it. We're trying to make it so that it's pretty quick, you know, that it's not a long, drawn-out process, but it's one that I think that all three of the the other staff members in the office will appreciate the fact that it's about as equitable and open and transparent as we can make it and that everybody will be given a fair review of what their interests and qualifications are. And somebody's going to be made happy and the other two are going to be a little disappointed. But we want them to all feel like that, that they had a, an, equitable, an, an equitable <clears throat> process is what we're looking for. And so my first request of you is that would you consider your involvement as the County Board of Commissioners in this as a, as a group of three, or would you like to designate someone? I mean, that I'm asking what you would prefer, but I would really think it's important if at least one of you could represent the board. I think our chair has already indicated an interest in that mm -hmm. area, as opposed to having a board. Excellent. Yeah. Is that all right with you? Yeah. <clears throat> I, I don't object that if we all three go. No, I'd rather just see one. I'd rather just see one. Yeah, and I have an interest in yeah. this. Thank you. Yeah. Do you have the date of September? <laughs> this is because of Eric's. This goal watch deal know, that he's he looking for is, is on a short short timeline. I mean, he's moving forward quickly on this. And we wanted to have this. We didn't want to go through a process of appointing an interim, and then to go back and try to yeah. appoint a permanent one. And so what we wanted to do was try to move this along quickly so that there could be some transition, so that Eric could show the new person the ropes, so to speak, and uh, there could be a little time for that. So actually the 9th of September is a date that we have set up. Neville, would you? For what time? Uh, we would do start at 10. And you want Neva? Yes. Okay. And this and what would be? Day is that? It's a, it's a Thursday, September 9th. Okay. Is that agreeable with you? Mm -hmm. okay. I just didn't know whether I was going to be out of town <laughs> yeah. or not. Well, that's the reason. I was very, I had yeah. some anxieties about this because we've been trying. It's really hard to get a lot of busy people together on one day in short term. To review for the position of county director. Replacing Eric's position. Right. That probably make more sense to me. Yes. 
and it really will be re- it will be replacing his leadership in the office mm-hmm. from from the existing staff members. And I'm going to talk to you in just a moment about where we're moving in terms of replacing his FTE. Okay. But that basically we've asked him. I, I'm assuming that we'd have a lunch break and he would be wound up early in the afternoon. Okay. So we go from three on. Thank you very much mm-hmm. for, for doing yeah. that. And I will. Can I an email? Do you use email? Yes. Uh-huh. Could you supply me with her email address? And that way, what I'll do is communicate everything directly to you. So the letters of application will be sent directly to you and all our other communications. And and our email is our secretary, and so she, she'll she copies everybody. But she she does, she'll she's a literate one. In email. <laughs> all right. Main thing is so that when I send when I send their letters of application okay. to the committee members, that you'll be able to get that and have it printed and off for you. be able to. And that way you could, you could review it in advance of that meeting. And I'll try to get that done. It, you'll have it within a couple of days. Okay. In the email. Uh, anything I've left out on? Oh, that? If, do you know if this room? It, we're looking for a room. Probably. This and if room this room would, would be available, it would be because there'd be like three. Oh, okay. Yeah. It there shouldn't be a problem. You need to check with that. Yeah. <clears throat> Normally, it's available. Okay. Because it'll be a group of what three, four, five, about six, there would six be, people. So if, yeah. if there was a table like this, we don't know if anybody would give a PowerPoint presentation or if they're just going to going to speak. But this would be, but, but this would work for any this table. Table. Yeah. If we could use it. Uh, we're also going to, in addition to the selection committee members, the Eric is going to be gone on that which is a little unfortunate, but it's okay. Uh, in addition to the selection committee members, of which will be yourself and myself, and then there will be three other people that will be on it. We're also going to invite the county staff members, Vicki and Madeline, are going to be invited to come in and listen. They won't be asking questions, but they'll be asked to come in and they can hear the whole discussion. Mm-hmm. And they're actually be, going to be given advisory ballots that they would complete on each of the candidates and they'll turn into the selection committee and give you the county office's feedback mm-hmm. on what they what they they think. And this also I know in a lot of county situations sometimes people the staff members don't feel like they were, you know, their views were, were given any consideration and that's what we're gonna try to do here is just to give them a chance to have some input. Okay. Anything else on that? No, I think that's Got the date? Mm. I'll, I'll be in touch with you. Now, on the other issue with regard to Eric's retirement at the end of uh, September, I think his last, I'll let you tell him all that, but we are going to move forward with taking care of refilling the FTE with a subject matter person. We won't advertise because we're going to refill the county director, the administrative leadership for the office from within the existing pool. We'll advertise for programmatic extension agent, uh, probably to do a national national search. And what we've got is, in addition to Eric's expertise, we also have Gary Pelter up in Grant County, both of whom have worked really been real assets to the commercial vegetable industry. Mm-hmm. And what we're what we'll go through is a process of trying to see how we can best bring those two FTEs so that they complement each other and north and south in this area. And what we will do, well, what and whoever your successor will do, is we'll set up some meetings with key constituency groups. Uh, for example, I'm meeting with Andy Jensen of the Potato Commission at 11 o'clock today to talk about this a little more. But one of our problems in refilling really quickly is the fact that with a senior agent like Eric, I mean, there, it takes about four and a half almost five months to pay them off because they have sick leave and annual leave accumulations. And we don't, and because of tight budgets, they have, it's been this way for a long, long time now, we don't have a pool of money that we can go tap sure. And, sure. to pay yeah. them off. Yeah. And so what we have is this time of, of his accruals in our budgets. I mean, we've budgeted for Eric for 12 months, but we're going to be paying Eric for about four and a half or maybe five months mm-hmm when Eric's going to be retired. So that has to come out of our existing revenue line. So we don't have any money to replace that with. And so 
That's always a dilemma in doing that. Uh, you know, you so to we speak, you hand off the key. We did the same thing in the county. When Jim came on, the same thing happened. Yep. You, know. you have that lag time. Yeah. And so that's one of the challenges is, is to, you know, take that to constituency groups who are real concerned for what Eric's been doing for them and what WSU and the county are going to do uh, to, to fill in that void. I mean, those are kind of questions that they're always pressed pretty hard on. And one of the things that I'm approaching the Potato Commission about, because they've been a beneficiary of a lot of the programs that both Eric uh -huh. and Gary have done, is if they were willing to assist in this transition in some of our costs uh -huh. that it takes to actually pay Eric off and to advertise for the refill. And so I'm going to approach them and see if they're interested in assisting. And it's not a large sum of money, but it's a, it's a sum of money that, it cost us on the average fifteen thousand dollars to refill the position. That's mm -hmm. about what it costs to pay out an experienced person for their sick leave and annual leave time, and to cover our advertising expenses. That's about what it costs us to refill the position. And if they're willing to share in some of that cost, we can move this forward quicker than I normally could do it. And what I'd really like to do is to really jump start it forward so that. We could have someone in Eric's program area position before Gary retires. Yeah, well that, there's a <clears throat> there's about a six month difference between our retirement date, so <coughs> four and a half months would would fit into that. And then if the Potato Commission hasn't said yes or no, but they they've been well, approached, and if if that if they would help, that would you know, what that would shorten the period. Take care of people, Eric. There's nobody that I work with that's got the money that the Potato Commission has. The, the Vegetable Association, it, it's possible that they they might come up with some small amount, but not the Potato Commission is the one with, 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 with more money. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, and, and, you're just talking, you're, you're, the Vegetable Association is just getting started on, on uh, funding research and putting money into it. Programs like that, so there, there, there. You're talking. We're talking like hundreds of dollars, whereas the potato condition is is way beyond, way beyond that potentially. It, mm -hmm. it, it, you know. Well, the Potato Commission does fund quite a bit of work with uh, WSU in terms of yeah. research and other activities, and so this would represent a little deviation from how they've chosen to spend their assessment money, but. I, you know, we're again, we're not requesting a large amount of money. We're not requesting a, a, an ongoing revenue stream. We're asking for just a little bit of help. One, one of the things we were concerned yeah. last time when Bill Ford left was losing the position in the county. Yeah. And I would have some concern at this time of that same thing. And uh, yeah. I don't know what we can do to cement that, but I think that needs to be done as much as we can. Well, I'm hearing that the, the university is committed to replacing Eric's position. It is consistent with your willingness to continue with the existing staffing arrangement. Yeah. yeah you, you never know at the university when they come to budget time. Well, here's... It be filmed here's time. It will, because my fiscal year that I'm operating right now runs on, is, is on a... that begins uh, July 1. Okay. And so the fiscal year that I'm... Where you're on a calendar fiscal year, we're on a fiscal year Straight that runs fiscal. July 1 to June 30. Yeah. And so I'm at the beginning of fiscal year 05. Mm -hmm. And right now I have the money in, oh, we don't in have the Southeast District that. budget for the WSU's component of the partnership. And so the question would be for you as you plan your budget for 2005, January 1, is that would you it, would you be budgeting for this this agent position here in the office, which is... Well, we, Our budgeting isn't broken out like that, else. though. Our budgeting is broken out not individually, just block some. Well, except they give us the figure yeah. for those four That's positions. Right. That's right. Still it's, it's, yeah, yeah. But, but you but, know what? Yeah, so, yeah, but we're, when we ask for the money, we're asking for all for, four. Yeah, four it, it shows four, four people. It That's is. why we're asking for a certain 
mm-hmm. certain amount that, of yeah. money. That, that MOA amount yeah. that Eric comes in and asks you for. See, we used to pay the salary, mm-hmm. yeah. and it got to be such a pain to yeah. back out retirement yeah. and the <laughs> like yep. whole thing that we went to pay the salary directly to Pullman, and then they they paid off the check. Not it was it was really a pain. Right. You were still here when yeah we when were when you made that change. Yeah. Yeah, and well, I used to get two two paychecks. Yeah. Well, four, actually, four paychecks a month huh? when I yeah. first came here. Some from the feds, some from the states. No, well, I get I get I get two from Franklin County, and I get two from WSU. Yeah, mm-hmm. but I I don't as I, I don't as speak for you. This is sort of what's been related to me in, in meetings. Mm-hmm. But just to so to, to for Frank's question within our district, and that's how staffing is sort of handled with agents now. Or extension educators is, in, is is within the district of which Randy is the director. But there are a number of positions that are vacant now. There are a number that are within a short time will be will become vacant. And WSU in the past, yet they have kept some positions empty. They haven't refilled all of those positions, but. There is a list, and there's like four positions in our district that are prioritized to be to be filled. This I, the, what, the position that I have is one. Gary Pelters is one, and then I don't, there are some. <clears throat> well, actually, then there are two chairman positions or district county director positions in Whitman County, and then one will be in Dayton. And those are the ones that are the, the given the. The, the priority positions to be filled, so they are slotted to be to be filled as long as, and you know, as, as Randy said, as long as the county support is there, that the WSU is committed to filling those positions, and then we're just hoping that we can get some uh, funding from our partners, you know, in the in, in the agricultural community, and that's where. You know, in an agricultural position, it, it makes it a lot easier because there usually are uh, potentially there's some money there, mm-hmm. and so that would just be with the potato, potato commission. It would just be a matter of if they can give the money, then it speeds up the process. Oh my! They help a bunch. Yeah. Yeah. But the process, the selection process, already I told. Randy, that Frank, you were the one sort of designated from the you know, county commissioners to serve in that in that position no. to advise on, on replacing this position as a as a agricultural educator. But couldn't the process go forward and uh, then have a higher date out if you didn't get the money from the potato commission? It could. I mean. Here, the situation I'm always in is that I need to have I need to have these things. First of all, they want me to they want me I have to manage the budget for the Southeast District, so they want me to know that I have enough money to pay for this this FTE. That's the first thing I have to budget, and the only way I can do that is through making these accruals up for the time frame. Unless there's intervention money, like from the Potato Commission, which can make it shorter. The other key important is the partnership with the counties. In other words, that MOA that's based off of a formula based off the demographics for the county, for a FTE extension faculty in Franklin County, is I, I think it's like $15,600 for the year for that particular okay. position. Mm-hmm. That's the formula basis for that. It's a, there's a few, it's 600 and some odd dollars. I don't recall the exact, but something in that range. Then if, if the county is willing and can budget the extension office for that much on, for that MOA that includes that extra FTE, then we will move forward with it. We have to time it such that, and I don't want to bore you with details, but it's just like anything else. You have to go through a, a, a procedure. For example, the Whitman County position that Eric mentioned, I've started that process. And so we have a screening committee put together, and that process will move forward. And I have the commitments of all the funding partners to make that work. And so the same thing could be true here. The one thing we can't do is because we have, we need to be committed to refilling it before we start the process because it's expensive. <laughs> and so we, want, we wouldn't want to initiate until we were confident that we would be moving forward with, with the refill. And that's kind of where we are. We can, 
the advantage is, is we probably won't be able to move too quickly if, if, if we know that we're looking at, at five months of accruals to pay off Eric and we have no money to backfill that, we won't start the process immediately because it will be so far out. I mean, so it, we'd start it reasonably quick, but we wouldn't have to start it immediately unless we knew that we had something because it just delays the whole process so much longer before you can actually do a, an offer, extend an offer, and actually have someone on site. And your backfill can't start until Eric's... That's right. Done. Until he's paid out, we can't pay anybody. Yeah. And what we would want to do also, and this is something I am committed to starting, is that I'll probably do it with whoever Eric's successor is and with the county commissioners. We would also want to identify some of the key groups that have an interest in extension and pull those people together probably for an evening meeting so that we can collect input on the program priorities, uh, those criteria, those skill levels that the group think is important in his, his programmatic replacement. Collect all that information and then what that does, Frank, is it gives me a, a much clearer picture of what the local situation is and what the program needs are because when I go to WSU, I have to get this approved at the provost level. Mm -hmm. And so I have to write a fairly persuasive need statement for why we need another extension faculty here. And that gives me the local input that I need to write that statement. So Ag is the basis of our county economy here. Mm -hmm. and, uh, the extension service certainly plays a very important part as does that Prosa Research Station up there sure. that we need to keep intact. So we, I would like to do that, and if you're the designation, or you're the delegate, so to speak, to that to that program area selection committee, then what we'd be doing is getting you together as quickly as we can to start that process. But uh, who would be um, bringing the folks in from, from the uh, groups? I mean, would that be yeah, up to us? Or no, that no, to no. That would be, that's going to be his successor's responsibility, okay. Okay. would be to identify a cross section of people okay. and get them together. It's worked well, and the many times I've done this before, I think it gives people a sense of being able to have input in the process. And it really does, especially for someone who's not familiar with a local situation like me, is that it gives me a sense by listening to all these different ideas and concerns, then when you put that together, you kind of have a big picture view of, of what the program, and I'll do the same thing in Grant County. And what I'm trying to do here subtly is figure out what's the best job description to write for each one of these so that, that nothing gets left out that's important to do, but at the same time that I'm trying to match these two positions up so they're complementary of each other and not necessarily exact duplicates of each other and then we don't leave some program area out. You know, and I really it's it's hard to understand exactly what those might be. I mean, uh, until you actually get the input from the folks and uh, can see what those thoughts are. Eric might be able to write his own position replacement. I don't know. But this does give, you know, a little more credibility to it if we ask people. You know, people are involved, you bet. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. So well, I think, yeah, I mean, it would be the sort of, some of the people that were on that, that, that meeting at Prost, or, I mean, they, they would be the one, you know, mm -hmm. thinking you know, those would be the same yeah, sort of people. Same. try to get some of those yeah. people on this search committee. And I can, I mean, I can make a recommendation or give some suggestions as far as the job description, but it may be that, you know, when you get that committee together and look at it, they may have some you know, tweaking and We'll just take areas. Eric's position description, yeah. and that'll be the starting point yeah. for yeah. the with the group. So. Mm -hmm. Everybody's always going to want to tweak it, you know yeah. that. Well, that's one thing. In, in extension, one of the good things about a position such as I have is we do have the opportunity to, to work on our job descriptions every year and make them fit what the local needs are. And if things change, we can cross something out and add something uh, something in there. I mean, not just at, at a whim, but if there's a reason to do it, uh, the job descriptions are really fit, try to fit what you do to give a, a true reflection of what, what's important in our, in our local work. 
I'll give you an example, <coughs> and then we we'll probably should get out of here. But uh, and let's say that we went through a process and we identified it, and then suddenly it was clear from these these input sessions that one of these positions, either Eric or Gary's, really needed to have a real strong pathology background. And maybe it was clear that in the other position we really needed someone that had more uh, cropping systems interest or it could be maybe maybe a more interest in the application of irrigation technology. I don't know. But I'm using that as an example to say that by it wouldn't probably wouldn't be wise for us to hire two people who were plant pathologists, one in Grant County, mm -hmm. one here. But we'd like to have them be complementary of each other in the program areas, so that we wouldn't have exact duplicates. And so if that makes sense, I'm, you know, yeah. you wouldn't want to have two people that were PhD plant pathologists, one here, one there, and with, unless there was a real, real good defensible need for it, because it stand to reason that they should be able to support each other mutually rather than just compete with each other. Just before we to make one comment, uh, Tim introduced an award, the awards for the Hay King at the fair. He did it at the livestock sale or at the stock yeah. sale. And uh, he did a good job and he awarded it out, I think, to th three places who had won. But what is important is what has transpired over the period of time. Bill Ford, when he first started that, they've gotten the food value and they bring that out. And that's becoming kind of common understanding. Maybe not totally, but they know there is a food value attached to it. Yeah. And this is a big change in the last umpteen years. I thought you were going to complain because you didn't win her. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do. I complain every year. <laughs> uh, well. Is there anything else? I don't know if we've overstayed our time or not. The, the, the room is not available. Um, oh, well, who is it? Um, got the it. hearings examiner. And I asked if they we could switch it to another place, but they need to record it because there's going to be attorneys involved in it. Um, but I'm thinking that downstairs in the, that big break room on the other oh, side. Okay, that that be open. <coughs> we we were that that's possible as long as we can. The people the understanding that they can't come in and sit there while the, the process is going on. But that room would work fine, and uh, Tim can just come up to the office up here. There's a big table down there, so that that would work. Can you close the door? Yeah, you can close off the, the two doors. Yeah, my office is going to be vacant that day. Well, what about your office? I'll be in Lotus Lake. Um, you can use that office. I just don't think it's going to be big enough for all the people that you're well, putting it. Anyhow, so I mean, my, I'll be uh, probably in Olympia. That well, the day, break so room might work as long as it's okay for us to occupy the break room. Oh, yeah, yeah it's fine. But just for the overflow people. Room. So I it's a lot bigger room. room. You can use my <laughs> office if you want. <clears throat> it would just need to accommodate, you know, like about five or six people. And it, actually, with the two staffers, probably seven people, eight people total. Yeah. And they wouldn't all have to be up at a table, would they? No. I mean, if you want to use that office, just, you know, I was just trying to find a big room. But I'll, I'll be if, they, if they did use yours, and Neva's office vacant, my office vacant that day. So well, my office is pretty small compared not to the, Not to me, then. I'm just speaking of the extra people that they didn't use. Well, the break room sounded like a good choice to me. Okay. If that's, if that's Whatever works okay. out, then. Okay. I was just thinking about the stairway. There wouldn't be anybody that would have a problem going down the stairs because it's not handicap accessible. Yeah. In this group, there wouldn't be. That okay. wouldn't be a concern in this All right. group. Okay. Thank you so much. Hi, I, you you're know, welcome. I don't get the opportunity to, to tell commissioners how much we uh, appreciate the partnership and, and the fact that what Eric and I have done for our careers is highly dependent upon boards of county commissioners just like yourself and willing to support WSU Extension. We hey, we're good people here, well, Randy. I it's want been you to know pleasure. without question. <laughs> Thank you very much. Say. And I'm sorry I wasn't at home when you... Well, she has a question to ask you. Yeah, I'm not finished up. Should we sign in here? Or will we? Please, yeah, please. Sue? Excuse me. Sorry, Sorry I wasn't so I at home. I got a little card from you saying, oh. sorry I missed oh. you. Oh, no. yeah. <laughs> Somebody must have been doorbelling out here. I was. And uh, there's carrots in our office. Guys, uh, for just a second, Evelyn. My fellow commissioners were just wanting to spend that money I, like crazy the minute they got it. But hey, we don't want to spend it at all. Is the thing. <laughs> <laughs> so just a Are we taking a recess?
Good. I need a new signature on the next one. I'll authorize a five minute recess until the chairman okay. comes back. That'll be fine. I'll have a draft on that for you. You can rewrite it as you please. But, um, okay, I'm suing the county. Oh, doesn't that make you mad? You want to just tear your snagged shirt? Snagged her dress. Snagged my dress. dress. <clears throat> that was a $900,000 dress, too. Mm. Designer edition. <laughs> Jenny from Wasat called, and they have set up breakfasts for Benton County and would like to set up a lunch to meet with the Franklin County elected officials. When? On September 23rd. You mean at their meeting or down here? Down here, September 23rd, lunch at the Red Lion. And now what is that all about? Well, they've done it before, haven't they? Yeah, they did it last year. Last year was They have come around every year. No, right? but who are you talking about? Wasak. Wasak, oh, Waco. Okay. Um, do we have anything going on? No. After our 23rd? Uh, the only thing going on is Mr. Brock is gone. Down in San Diego, and well, that's good. Maybe we'll have some peace and quiet, and we'll get a word in edgewise. Yes, it, yeah. <laughs> uh, is it lunch? Did you say lunch instead of breakfast? Instead of breakfast, because they're having breakfast at Benton County, right? Okay. It was just reversed last year. Okay. So I wanted to mention that to you. Hey, you got to check with, make sure that John Gibbons knows. He may drop in. He may have won by then. Well, that's going to be beyond the primary thing. Because, see, the primary decides it. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. Just to stir Claude up a little bit. You know. Back to business. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Tim came out and said he wanted to have a field tour. He's going to be gone from the 8th until the 17th of September. Time to cancel it. <clears throat> we could either do it this Thursday or... Uh, Seems like I got something Thursday. Well, you do. It's 10 o'clock now. What? The September 9th. The uh, Not this Thursday. This is September 2nd, I thought you were talking about. I'm sorry. I am. This Thursday. No, I guess I don't have you anything. You don't have anything. I have something at 30. Uh, Frank has something at 30. You know what? I'm a fellow. They can cancel it. I have to go to 813, though. <laughs> um, I won't have anything to do from between probably 930 or quarter of 10 and um, 430. Well, All we want to do he, is make sure we hit lunch. Yeah. He, he said that they, it would not be striped by then, and he was hoping that oh. he could do it when it was striped, which the earliest time would be September 20th at 11 o'clock. I've been scheduled a field tour. Is that on Monday? Monday? That is on a Monday, so after the board. The budget workshops are down further. Um, the Monday afternoon would work. The 20th? Yeah. Okay, the only problem with the 20th is Sue has a food and fitness meeting at 1.30. I don't know if he would make it back in time for that. Um, I could probably skip it, but they frown at me when I do. Okay. What's the food and fitness? That's the... Um, uh, that's the health alliance right. thing, and they're trying. We're trying to make the world Washington healthy. State healthy, and I've got a whole routine for you guys worked out. Good. <laughs> okay, so go ahead and schedule that for the twentieth then. Uh -huh. Okay. I, I don't know what's going to be happening on the twentieth. Okay. Uh -huh. I may still be crying, and I may be campaigning like crazy against Jimbo, my friend. <clears throat> Oh, would you ask Pat, would you ask Jared about that or tell Jared about that? He is busy and so is Greg, and he was going to talk to Jared Lingle about him. How busy is he when I ask him to do something? I don't know, he said to give him time. Well, Jerry wouldn't. Jerry doesn't have that expertise. No. It's got to be Fine, I'll just take somebody from Benton County. Don't worry. I have friends in Benton County. And he's fine. I can, I can go down and tell Jerry to please change his plans. Well, it depends on what their plans are. If his plans are to go home and sit back and not have to go with me, that's one thing. Oh, oh no, I change my plans to people all the time. Nobody ever changes their plans for me. Makes me so happy. I'm happy now. Oh, I thought we were <laughs> done with you. Nope. I need to, uh, I'm going to do it with my stuff. 
Yeah, that's for. Uh, that's why we pay the big bucks. We'll witness your signature. We'll witness your identification. Ads, anyway, so. This is the tax number. What What are we being? That's for the cell tower. They're going to start okay. sending us money, so they need to have that. They are going to. Well, win. yeah. Well, they've sent back the executed contracts. They're all executed for C Cellular One, not Verizon at this time. So the that's four hundred and fifty dollars a month. They'll start coming in. Oh, I don't care. Fred can go with me. He knows about that. All about that stuff. What's that? Planning. Planning? <laughs> Where? Yeah, those guys to really the, need to go with you. Yeah, to the... There's no way that you can do that I wanted to say yourself. home builders, but I don't think that's I mean, the right name. They're no, inviting us to that, come because the they have all these... Realtors. Um, they, uh, they, they just want to get a grasp on what's doing with building in the counties, you know, and it's just a from five to seven type thing. Ooh, where is that at? I didn't even look where it was, but it's a local it's hotel, I'm sure. Or maybe it's at their... I thought maybe it was at their meeting room. Like, well, we'll talk about it Did they interview you at all in regard to Not yet. They won't supporting? Be. Oh, they will. They always have supported me, but uh, they will See, they, not they do it had yet. two for me, but they didn't when Charlie Gregg against me. They won't interview you. Huh? They won't interview you. No, no, but when I went... Oh, in the editorial board? Yeah, they no, didn't... No, editorial team, yeah. The home builders or whatever you call them. Realtors. Yeah. I'll make sure that, that yeah, either uh, yeah, one of those chairs are with Kilberry. you. Right okay. They can explain it. The well, they've got there. all the answers. You know they're going to ask. I mean, I have vast yeah, information it, yeah. and knowledge. And they don't I don't know what day it is, but I'll get it. Well, okay. Stuart, have you been to the editorial board? No, I haven't been anywhere, and I'm not unhappy about it. I think they'll wait till after this gels out, you know, till after the primary. I'm assuming they'll have to wait. But see, they the haven't, on this side, they haven't picked any of the representatives, they haven't picked the senators, they haven't done any of that. It's all been in Benton County. Mm -hmm. you know, the little got, reporter and I are going doorbelling to, together, though. Who? Um, Melissa, the girl who says I'm not running. But Jared would be honored. Jared would be honored. What were his plans that I broke? <laughs> he has two babysitters. And I suggested that he get a babysitter. You can take Riley. Riley would enjoy going with you. Yeah, the question is, would you enjoy Riley being with you? <laughs> I wish I had somebody to babysat because I'd send him over there. He said he would go. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Um, is she really going to go with you? Who? Melissa. Melissa Bill and Bell. I are going doorbelling. She, mm -hmm. what, she wants to hear what people say to you? I suppose. You know, I went doorbelling the other day and they're all voting for me. Even those who can't speak my language are voting for me, I think. They smiled and said, yes, yes. It's interesting how that really? is, because it's hard to find have all the well, for you. Have you got yeah, everybody response? has been wonderful, but <laughs> Neva, you, you can get a guy off your doorstep a lot easier if you say, yeah, thank you, thank you, nice to meet you. I have <laughs> oh, just, God, I just, <laughs> want, just let him get one more thing done. <laughs> a, little, a little trouble keeping her focus, Fred. I it's, it's the uh, medication she takes. <laughs> I'm not taking. I know, anything. but you can use that. Okay, it's a, it's number a seven. It's a uh, medication that causes uh, a slip. The child Come support office. Child support um, needs two exit doors. Well, that was brought to us a couple, actually, I think a year or so. A long ago. time ago, they um, needed them. And somebody so had, bad they needed them. Well, what it, it's going to cost probably about twenty five hundred dollars to put that door in there, and, and it's not just so much the doors to, to redo the wiring in there, but. The way the way the the room is set up is that if they only have one one way in and out. Now Bob Cook brought this to me. Um, some somebody from the child support was complaining to him. I'm assuming um, as the fire marshal for Franklin County, and he came in and said, <laughs> "Well, it, I think it's a security measure too, isn't it?" Well, well I called Steve Lowe on Bob that. Should be involved. Need to say this now. Oh, see, and here I thought he didn't know anything about the county. Um, all my, I call I call Steve Lowe about it this morning and ask him about it and he says you know they've been complaining for ten years they, that they want that door in there. Ten and years. I think we haven't been in there ten years, have we? I'll bet it has well, been Bob pretty close. Be, no, no, no. Bob gets to be a commissioner. He'll get it. Ninety-five. 
Well, that's not 10 years yet. Not when, like nine years, I'm sorry. No. He said 10 years. I'm just telling you what he it's said. Not I didn't do probably that. about eight. That's been Let's done. don't okay. argue details. Okay, it's from day one. Mm -hmm. that's, How's that? I do um, remember them. You know, Clyde can do it. Um, it's just that we have to have an electrician come in. So, I mean, is this something that, that you're interested in having? Where are they going to do it? Where are they going to do it? Um, there'll be an, an added corridor or, or door to the corridor. Um, uh, On the same side of the original one? Right. It'll be just down the, you know, if you go into the child support uh, office, it'll it probably be about 20 the feet. Bathrooms. 20 yeah. feet closer to the bathroom. What about the money? <laughs> they well, the they don't have money. I, I asked Steve Lowe, if, you know, because you know, oh. when I called him, I said, well, I thought you were going to look at child support, getting money for child support, and he says, child support won't pay for it. Um, well, you tell Bob Cook that we just don't just run around here just frivolously handing out money because people ask. Okay. I, you know, what's your feelings on that? I thought, though, that I thought when it was presented, it was also kind of a security well, issue, not because so much of fire, but because of they thought maybe there would be. There was concern be about uh, an angry individual mm -hmm. who, of course, yeah. you know, they, they always are in the court systems, but uh, that if a disgruntled parent comes yeah. in, I mean, it's a child uh, support enforcement office, mm -hmm. that they have no way out. I mean, they just have the one door yeah. to get out, and, and it's, it's apparently bothering them quite Just out of curiosity, Fred, when we remodeled, didn't child support come in and uh, participate in that remodel? They did. And how do we miss it at that time? What I'm saying is... That it if, wasn't a code requirement is why we didn't put it in. But if it's in uh, code or in uh, child support, why wouldn't they come back? Steve just said that they wouldn't pay for it. He, they said he been, they've been trying to cut him back from a full-time employee back, and they just won't pay the money. But that's not an operation. That's a capital expenditure here. Oh, yeah. No, that he no, he won't even go to him about it. So he said. Well, is he the only one that can go to him? I don't know. He's the one with contracts with him. What would it cost to apply that? Well, John told me this morning. He said that the price was about twenty five hundred dollars, and I said, "You got to be kidding me! Twenty five hundred bucks." And he says, "Well, it's the electrical. There's but electrical." What's the in electrical there. with the door? Well, if they cut into an electrical line opening up the wall, they have oh. to divert the electrical line up and around and, and back down. But I mean, that, but that shouldn't cost twenty five hundred dollars. God, you're looking at say, I don't know how big a door are you talking about. Well, a I door. ask if it was the same. Door. Yeah, a door. I ask if I, it was the same door. door. Yeah, it's just not a fire door. Or anything. You know, I don't understand that. It's not going through a cement wall. No. Are you sure there's wires going through that area? I'm just telling you what they told me. I have not investigated it. Yeah, I, I would reevaluate those well, wires. Well, couldn't they just pull those wires up to the attic? To the ceiling? No, I don't They'll have to circumvent the door, but uh, it'll just involve just two splices or anything you're into. Are we interested in putting the door in? Yes, but I don't see how it can cost that much. Well, we'll get it as cheaply as we can. I'm just, I, I was thrown this this morning. Let's take it and out John of the capital outlay budget. Or take it out of, of a sour line out of a John budget. Well, I'll see if he's got it in his budget for his public has. safety building. Well, he might have with it under them. And if not, capital? Okay. John's personal sour line out of it was about 2500 bucks. Okay, and then the state auditor's meeting at 1.30 today. I'll be with the city. Uh, Tim and I are going to meet in my office uh, about a half hour earlier so we can discuss stuff so we're not going to call. Well, that, entrance, that entrance audit isn't too big a deal anyhow. Really now, nice. just remember, when we take that Tim trip, we have to be up at the other end of the county by noon. Tim trip. When we go with Tim to the... It's a Tim trip. Okay. She's talking about <laughs> the tour on the Tim trip. Okay. Well, I wasn't invited, so I'm not going to worry about it. Well, we might let you go. You should go. Um, you're the county administrator. Mm -hmm. I know what's going on. Are we having an executive session? I just put that on there every it it always is a problem. Um, have you have you looked at the capital outlay budget and see where we're at for spending? No. Because. Prosecutor's got ten thousand in books, and Superior Court has five. And what's FTR recording equipment? 
that's this recording system. I don't know if that was mine. You know, we actually, we pulled that out of there uh, because that was a carryover from, I think that's the one that was a carryover from last year. And then we've got uh, 31,000 in computer hardware. Have we I, spent very much of that? No, I think there's probably two-thirds of that left. And, you know, we could slow down on community computer hardware. Well, the, the only thing that drives that computer hardware is is our Engage systems. Software. Well, our, no, yeah, that and when our systems, you know, fail. Yeah. Well, let's take it out of that budget someplace. Out of capital outlet. Mm -hmm. I'll see if I can't get it out of John's first, and then yeah. if I can. The first choice out of that, yeah. I'll, I'll you know. Yeah. Have you got any figures uh, on, um, on our um, Kitchen. No, actually, Mel called today uh, or last week, and I'm going to get Mel over there to, to talk with um, Captain the Long. Of the jail. Yeah, yeah the, you're talking about the dinners, providing dinners and stuff. Mm -hmm. I'll try to get him over there this week. I meet with Juvenile uh, tomorrow morning at 8.30 to go over their budget. You know, it kind of surprises me a little bit. Um, I was talking with Dave Sparks last week or the week before, just recently anyway, and he said that, you know, whatever Franklin County decides on the juvenile budget is what Benton County is going to go with. And then talking with uh, Steve Lowe, he's basically saying that, you know, there's a lot of dead programs over there that really doesn't need to be, you know, funded that is funded. And but we need to know which ones those are. Because yeah, and he needs yeah. to come out publicly publicly yeah. in front of the judges and tell them that. <laughs> we because come out as the bad guys in yes, that, you know. And we, uh, we, we don't, don't know. know. Well, I was going to suggest possibly maybe, you know, a one-time uh, consultant to actually go in, Benton and Franklin County going together to have somebody go in there and basically do an analysis of the juvenile center. That's a good idea. Because we've got less people. In yeah, the less people and probably less, yeah, less people, period. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, Fred, I think Benton County would be interested in it, too, so I'll talk to David about it. Repairs and maintenance on the museum and public health departments, 2500 in there. Yeah, we... And I doubt if we've spent anything, we? have spent a little bit out of there, um... Recently, I think and then courthouse was, repairs and maintenance. They were doing some things. We bought the funder, didn't we? We transferred that courthouse repairs and maintenance to the annex, to this building, and to the to the portables and stuff. I'm sorry, Sue. What were you saying? I think the museum, at least, was doing. Didn't we buy the paint when they did the painting down there? Well, yeah, it seemed like they had some problems with their elevator or something, and or maybe elevator contracts. I don't. I don't recall. What it was. Well, I guess I can look at the printouts, but what else do you have? That's it. You've closed your book, so. <laughs> yeah. I want to leave well, now. Well, the chairman gets up and leaves, and you still have a lot of critical business. <laughs> I, I wondered if you'd be willing to approve some minutes that I don't have copies back from all of you yet, but because you won't meet together, all three of you again for a week and a half. Yeah. If, would that be okay? Back Don't we have another meeting on Wednesday? Yes. <laughs> I'm thinking ahead to next Wednesday. Let's wait till Wednesday. We'll all be here I'm Wednesday, sorry. this Wednesday. Mm -hmm. just, but you have mine all back, don't you? I, I did too and just gave them to Pat over the weekend, so. Those are you. Okay. okay. I don't care. I don't okay. care. Okay. I forgot these. We are adjourned, okay? Hey, hey. All righty.